Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Palace Confidential, celebrating the life of the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. I'm Jo Elvin and with the news of the passing of Prince Philip at the age of 99, we wanted to bring you a very special episode focusing on the life and legacy of Her Majesty the Queen's husband. Now, of course, Prince Philip retired in 2017, but that didn't stop him remaining a firm, fond favourite with many of our contributors. And they told their fabulous stories right here on Palace Confidential. Let's have a look back now at some of our favourite anecdotes. Prince Philip has been out and about twice in the last few days. We've seen the lovely Beatrice's wedding photos, but he's had a more formal engagement as well, right? It was a real turn up for the books. I mean, he's been retired since 2017. He doesn't undertake royal engagements anymore. But when the rifles, of which he's colonel in chief, and he's had an association with for 67 years, so they wanted to say a proper ceremonial goodbye to him. He's now handing over the role to his daughter-in-law, the Duchess of Cornwall. And he actually said yes. So they had a small ceremony at Windsor Castle. Four buglers played some of the rifles' traditional calls, and they wished him fair seas which was kind of reference to his, his own um, very distinguished naval service. And actually, it was only three minutes, but it was a really moving event. And we couldn't, I mean, he looked five years younger, I have to say, than when we last saw him. One of my favourite stories is that um, he, he was talking to his valet one day and he asked about a particular footman. And his valet said, I'm afraid that he was fired. And he said, why? And he said, oh, he was caught in, in a cupboard with a housemaid. And he said, fired? He should have been given a medal. So, I mean, he's very quick-witted. I love these little stories about him. Well, I've only met Prince Philip once when I was invited to a party at um, Buckingham Palace. And surprise, surprise, I, I wasn't invited back after writing about it in a newspaper diary. Um, <laughs> But Prince Philip sort of did the rounds and he, he, he came up to us and he started grilling me and he said, oh, um, which new newspaper are you from? And I said, oh, from the Daily Telegraph, you know, thinking he would like that. And he said, ah, oh, which department? And I said, oh, the social diary. And he said, ah, oh, the fiction department. Um, I think he was joking. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember on one occasion when he had been ill I think he might have come out of hospital even and we were on a job and kind of we as a press chorus kind of shouted out you know how are you sir and you know he turned around and was like well do I look bloody ill you know he was really snappy about it but I, I quite like that I quite like the fact that he's pretty defined about it you know he's known as the Iron Duke and you know and and rightly so. As a young man Prince Philip was delighted to have children and loved babies really good with young children, which a lot of men aren't. When his children grew into difficult teenagers, that was really when, when he, he, he wasn't so good because, you know, they would, they would sort of flaunt his authority. But um, the one he's, of course, closest to is, is Anne. She is the most like him and they get on so well. The one word Prince Philip has said to me. Oh, go on, detail, Joe. He said, ooh! when I was introduced to him and somebody whispered in his ear that I was the editor of Glamour magazine. That's my only exchange with Prince Philip. <laughs> but what do you think it meant, Jo? <laughs> oh, was it great or was it? Either. Probably better than being shouted at, so. Yeah. <laughs> what I do really remember was um, a garden party, which was uh, at Buckingham Palace, and it happened to coincide with the exact um, date of his birthday. Um, and as journalists, you know, we were chatting to people afterwards, finding out what had been said. And it transpired basically that people had been advised not to mention his birthday in advance of meeting him. And uh, a woman had actually bought him a present and he had said to her, oh, can you just put it over there? Because I don't want to lug it round the garden. Um, and, and I can sort of understand because, you know, you don't want hundreds of people saying happy birthday to you when it's not meant that's not meant to be what the day's about but I think it does just kind of sum him up you know he didn't really want to be the center of attention he didn't want it to be about him um and you know I think the other thing it was his 93rd birthday and just absolutely incredible that um he was still carrying out official engagements when he was 93 and up until he was 96 when he retired but I think people will remember him for two things one is the Duke of Edinburgh's award, because it has his name attached to it. And sadly, his gaffes. 
And he knows that. And there's nothing he can do about it. He knows that that's what people are going to remember him for. Well, of course, a career spanning more than seven decades of public service is never going to be easy to summarise. And somebody who knows all too well what an exceptional life Prince Philip lived was Ian Lloyd, who wrote the book The Duke, 100 Chapters in the Life of Prince Philip. Here he is to summarise some of the best of the life and times of the Duke. Prince Philip gave an amazing contribution, I think, to, this, uh, to the monarchy and to the Queen, a great help. Um, early on, when he became, uh, when the Queen became Queen, he was the consort. He he didn't have an obvious role. If you're the Queen consort, like his mother-in-law, Queen Elizabeth, there are certain things that you do that the, the King wouldn't do. So you divide the role between the two. Uh, when it's a Queen like our Queen, you, everything goes through her more or less. So um, Philip didn't have an obvious role. So um, he developed his own very very soon after he became uh, after they became came to the throne and he took on over the years some 800 organizations mi military and also um, uh, various charities um, the Duke of Edinburgh Award scheme also the World Wildlife Fund uh, and a whole variety of, um, of smaller charities um, uh, both here and in throughout the Commonwealth over the years because um, he, he worked for 65 years from 1952 until he retired at not the amazing age of 96. I mean, it's it's phenomenal when you think about it. But um, he retired in 2017, and by then he'd done over 22,000 solo engagements. That's obviously just him, as well as accompanying Queen on all her um, tours um, uh, through the Commonwealth and um, the, um, well around the world. I mean, they've been to nearly every country. So there's only a handful of countries there. between them. They didn't go. And on top of that, he did his own tours. There was over 600 solo tours that Philip made. So it's a vast contribution. It was estimated by Buckingham Palace that he'd done um, 5,500 speeches. Uh, it was all made easier by um, the improvements in uh, um, the way we get around the planet. I mean, when the, the first tour took six or seven months because they had to go by ship to um, Australia and um, uh, New Zealand and Canada, they were great imperial tours in the 1950s. But by the 70s, it was, um, it was possible to fly to Australia for the Queen to open the Sydney Opera House in virtually a weekend. So it was, it was, um, it was a lot easier. And uh, Philip himself embraced the um, uh, flying. He um, uh, apparently Winston Church was horrified because he took to the helicopter, which Churchill tried to stop him doing. This was an this is in the coronation year of 1953, and Prince Philip um, took to flying a helicopter to visit the uh, troops that were coming over for the coronation. Um, he got his RAF wings that year, 1953, and his helicopter wings three years later, 1956. And by the end of the 50s, he's also got a, a private pilot's license. So he um, flew um, 59 types of aircraft, which is quite a lot. And, uh, completed almost 6,000 flying hours. And he only retired again flying in 1997 at the age of 76. So um, that was a considerable uh, career. He landed, uh, he, uh, he ended it a bit better than Prince Charles, who ignominiously crash landed one of the Queen's uh, jets on uh, a Scottish island. And uh, that was the, the end of his uh, flying career. Thank you for joining us today to look back over the life of the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. We'll see you next time on Palace Confidential. Bye-bye.